Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we have fantasy news ranging all the way from hardcore, well-known fantasy author tweets to the more obscure adaptation news. And we're going to go ahead and jump right on into that after a quick self-promo plug. For those of you that somehow missed it on Saturday, I did release the long-awaited 2019 Fantasy Awards in the style of the Oscars. Link to that, of course, and everything else I talk about here today in the description down below. And while you're checking out that or any of the stories I talk about, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like, I'd really appreciate it. Without any further ado, let's jump into the fantasy news. I don't know what I was going for there. That was... That was weird, and I didn't like what I just did. Now, we got a tweet update from Lord Grimdark himself, Joe Abercrombie, the author of the First Law series. He tweeted out, So, the trouble with peace is finished. 195,000 words. So, about before they are hanged length. He then goes on in this Twitter thread to explain more about the series and what to expect. I won't get into it for possible spoiler reasons. I know people are really sensitive about that, especially new books from authors like this. But it's worth checking out if you're a First Law fan. And there are also was a pretty funny exchange between Joe Abercrombie and Brent Weeks himself in this thread. Good luck finding it. I think it was quite hilarious. And Joe Abercrombie kind of came out on top on that one, but these guys are both just funny. I didn't get the people who kept tweeting at me like, oh, there's like author beef. These are grown men who are like peers and they're obviously just poking fun at each other. They're not actually like going at it head to head. That's not what this is, but it's a cool little exchange and it's funny. Go check it out. Now, speaking of author tweet updates, we had an update from Sabah Tahir who tweeted out 13 years, 700 songs, 2005 croissants, 106 breakdowns, 52 outlines, 50,101 cups of coffee, seven buckets of tears, four editors, millions of readers. And finally, Ember 4 is done. Thank you for sticking with me. That is quite the exciting update from the author herself. I'm looking forward to see how this series is received by its fans and having many of them let me know in the comments down below if this is something I should check out. Now in news that I love because I like shiny new covers, judge me for it, Orbit Books tweeted out, N.K. Jimson's Inheritance Trilogy books are getting a beautiful new repackage. Orbit is very pleased to present these updated covers inspired by the regal architecture of the City of Sky. I know many people actually probably heard Inheritance and thought this. I sure did, but no, this is N.K. Jimson's Inheritance Trilogy. There's the Inheritance Cycle and the Inheritance Trilogy. This is the Inheritance Trilogy. I don't know why that like took my brain like two minutes to fully understand when I was reading this tweet. Probably because I read it really early in the morning and I didn't have coffee yet. Yes, new N.K. Jimson covers. Very excited and I just kind of love everything N.K. Jimson touches, so maybe I'll pick these up because I don't actually own this trilogy physically yet. Now transitioning out of author Twitter news, we have an update for a Magic the Gathering documentary that is apparently being made by the same team behind the toys that made us. I really actually like this production style this team goes for. I think it's really engaging and fun. And the Magic the Gathering culture is a fandom that is so fanatical. I'm actually really excited to learn about this community and the history behind this card game, even as someone who doesn't particularly play it. I think I've played Magic the Gathering twice, once in college, and once as an adult and card games just don't honestly hook me that much. It's weird. I just like seeing people talk passionately about something they love. So I'm probably really going to be interested in this and definitely check it out. Now in the story that probably brought many of you here who are not actually subscribed to the channel, I hope you enjoy the video so far. Like and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more fantasy news. We got new images for The Mandalorian being promoted by Empire Magazine. These were not specifically for season two, but they are just related to a general look back at deep dive into the show that Empire is doing. So if you're subscribed to the magazine, look forward to that April issue. But the images themselves are ranging from quite cute to quite badass. I'm guessing you know which characters are relating to which kinds of images. But transitioning out of that news, we need to update a story we've covered here repeatedly on Fantasy News, and this will be the start of the brief bit of Witcher news we need to discuss here today. And that is that it is being reported that Netflix has officially offered Mark Hamill the role of Vesemir in Witcher. And that is very cool to hear and definitely exciting, but I would like you to keep in mind and definitely remember just because a role is offered and both parties have expressed interest does not mean it will be done. Mark Hamill is a high budget 
actor. It's expensive to get him, and they may make an offer he doesn't like. He could have issues with scripts, concepts, all kinds of things could prevent this from happening, but it's definitely an interesting step in the right direction to having Mark Hamill play Vesemir for the future of Witcher. I really like that. I'm hoping this works out, but I just also want to tamper expectations that just because an offer has been made, that does not mean it's definitely confirmed happening. It could come down to even something as simple as scheduling conflicts. So yes, hyped, awesome, hope it works out. Take it with a grain of salt. And in the last piece of Witcher news we're gonna cover here today, it seems that two new Witchers have been cast and they'll be playing Lambert and Kion. Now, I don't really know these actors, their names are now on the screen, but what I will say I'm definitely interested is seeing season two of The Witcher explore the culture and history behind the Witchers and their establishment uh, very in depth. I think that's one of the most interesting parts of the whole lore of this world and universe. So I really hope we do get a refocusing on that in season two, which would make sense and line up with a lot of the book stories telling progression we've already seen from season one. So I'm hyped for season two. And as I said before, even though I didn't love season one to the point where a lot of people did, I think it has an incredible potential as a show. And I hope season two lives up to that potential. Now, touching on two brief pieces of trailer news, we had a trailer drop for Castlevania season three over at Netflix. I've never actually seen this. Let me know if the show's pretty good in the comments down below. Of course, I won't be showing clips of trailers anymore. I know that bothers some of you guys. And we also got a trailer for season four of Stranger Things. This trailer does absolutely contain a spoiler if you are not caught up with the show or even if you just like knowing absolutely nothing going into season four don't watch this this has like a definite oh get you hooked interested thing but i could see many people actually considering it a spoiler so proceed at your own caution trailers linked down below just want to get a fair warning out there i will say in response to the stranger things season four trailer it's good to see you comrade and for my comic book fans in the audience i know you're out there i appreciate and respect you being here on the channel we have a look into the 80th anniversary Green Lantern Special Edition DC is putting out to celebrate the character, and the artwork on it is beautiful. I actually really, really like what's presented here, and I think it works out extremely well, so I'm all about this. Even as someone who's not a huge DC fan, I just appreciate comic book art and having something that's so clearly a look back through the ages of the character and how that art style has progressed looks really cool to me. So very cool for you DC fans. I think this looked quite spectacular. Now we got an update from Tom Holland regarding the Uncharted movie that he is a part of. And he has explained that this will be a origin story for the titular protagonist character, Nathan Drake. And what I have to say to that is, duh, you're younger than me playing Nathan Drake. I dear God hope it's an origin story. Seriously, it really, really needs to be. I, I, I actually really like you, Tom Holland. I think you're great as Spider-Man, but Nathan Drake, they're really hoping you stick around to play this character for decades. Wow, I just, you're younger than I ever would have cast. That's, that's my thoughts on that. I would have gone with like Jeremy Renner, maybe. I don't know. Who would you have cast as Nathan Drake? I'm not saying Tom Holland can't do it. I think he could definitely do a certain interpretation of his character at a younger age, but it's just really strange to see someone, as someone who's only played Uncharted for, cast for this character who seems not such a fit and i'm usually someone who's very okay with castings across the board and just like down for the actor's talent and tom helen's got it but this is just such a left turn for me it's strange and in an update to the masters of the universe show that's coming down the road it seems they have landed an all-star class speak of the devil mark hamill is reported to be involved as well as lita hetty chris wood sarah michelle geller those are big names to be attached to a Masters of the Universe adaptation. And this is one that I honestly don't have much interest in. I've, I've, I've never been a Masters of the Universe person. I know I'm supposed to be like, psyched for all the fantasy news regardless and just down for it, but Masters of the Universe has just never been my, uh, my, my piece of pie. Not my thing. <laughs> now, in the final bit of fantasy news we're gonna cover here today, I want to address some rumors that have been plaguing the internet that involve Blizzard. And that is that there is some kind of adaptation coming down the road, either for their Diablo franchises or their Overwatch franchises. I've looked into these rumors and they seem to be very light with just some people involved with the studio hinting at things, a lot of extrapolation from the fact that there's been a lot of like Overwatch shorts and the fact that we're getting Overwatch 2 possibly. So while I'm not saying these are demonstrably false and there's nothing in the works, what I will say is my interpretation of this as someone who's been covering adaptations like this for well over two years now is that it's probably very far out if it's happening at all. And I would focus your fandom energy elsewhere until we get something a bit more concrete. Don't put all your hype eggs in this basket. Something could be announced, but even if it is, I wouldn't expect any form of release until 2022. We're talking 
possibly. But that is the last bit of fantasy news we're going to cover here today. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you'd like to support what I do here. And check out the 2019 Fantasy Awards if you have not seen them already. I've been having quite a bit of fun with that green screen. And should I include green screens in fantasy news in the future? Maybe put a desk in front of it, try and get like a, a daily show vibe going? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. Like and subscribe. I think I already said that. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my three latest high tier Patreons, Patricia, Isito, Yato, dot, 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 Ains, and Max. Thank you guys so much for the support. I appreciate y'all. And uh, thank you to all our new Patreons. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.